a young boy stands by the sea, recounting a tale about a man named Michael Sullivan with whom he spent six eventful weeks on the run. The story then shifts to the year 1931 in Rock Island, Illinois. The same boy navigates through a crowd, selling newspapers while riding his bicycle. After finishing his task, he returns home to a playful snowball fight with his little brother, observed by their loving mother. However, the boy's father, Michael Sullivan SR, appears distant and not very fatherly. When Michael Jr. fetches his father, he witnesses him taking a gun from his waistband and placing it on the bed. The next day, the family attends a funeral for a colleague of Sullivan Sr. there, Michael Jr. meets Connor Rooney, the son of his father's boss, a stern and unpredictable individual. In contrast, Connor's father, John, connects well with the two boys, engaging in craps and keeping them entertained. During the eulogy, the deceased man's brother, Finn McGovern, hints at John's involvement in his brother's death. Before completing his speech, Sullivan SR abruptly stops him and escorts him out of the room, swiftly joined by Connor. They place him in a car and send him off. Connor mentions he'll speak to the man later once he's sober, expressing dissatisfaction when Rooney instructs Sullivan SR to accompany him. Rooney emphasizes they should only engage in conversation, cautioning against any other actions. This detail is crucial due to John Rooney's status as a feared mob boss, with Sullivan being his top enforcer. Unbeknownst to Sullivan's two children, he has risen through the ranks under Rooney's mentorship. Sullivan SR, an orphan in his youth, views Rooney as more of a father figure than his actual son, Connor. This sentiment becomes evident in a touching moment during the wake, where they share a piano duet. The evening after the funeral, Connor and Sullivan SR meet with McGovern to discuss the content of his eulogy. Unbeknownst to them, Michael Jr. secretly follows his father to uncover the nature of his job. Peering through a hole in the wall, he witnesses the men accusing McGovern's deceased brother of stealing from Rooney, a claim McGovern vehemently refutes. McGovern then shifts blame to Connor for the missing money. In response, Connor fatally shoots McGovern, while Sullivan SR eliminates the other men in the room. Spotting Michael Jr. as they prepare to leave, Connor nearly shoots him. Although Michael Jr. escapes the building, he's confined within the estate by a closed gate. Instead of offering comfort, Sullivan SR swears him to silence. The following morning, before school, Rooney visits the Sullivans. He discusses the previous night with Michael Jr., attempting to gauge his willingness to keep quiet. Rooney employs intimidation, emphasizing the importance of honor, keeping one's word, and settling debts. Michael rides away on his bike without uttering a response. Sullivan SR and Rooney discuss the recent events, confident that the boy will keep his promise of keeping things quiet. While accurate about him not divulging details at school, Michael starts to act rebelliously, engaging in a fight that lands him in detention. During the next mob gathering, Rooney confronts Connor, forcing him to take responsibility for his actions. Connor delivers an insincere apology for the murder, facing embarrassment from his father and senior mob members. In a final affront, Rooney invites Sullivan to his office, excluding Connor. Envious, Connor hands Sullivan a letter supposedly from his father to give to Tony Calvino, a speakeasy owner indebted to Rooney. Sullivan presents the letter to Calvino, who reaches for his revolver upon reading it. Sullivan acts swiftly, eliminating Calvino and his bodyguard. Upon reading the letter, he discovers it's not from Rooney but from Connor, instructing Calvino to kill Sullivan in exchange for debt forgiveness. While Sullivan SR is at Calvino's place, Connor heads to Sullivan's residence with the intention of eliminating his family. He successfully targets Mrs. Sullivan and their youngest son but fails to harm Michael Jr., who is spared due to serving detention. Michael Jr., however, arrives home just in time to witness the gunshots and see Connor hastily leaving. Shortly after Connor's departure, Sullivan SR returns home to find Michael in a state of shock, surrounded by his deceased family. Connor confesses his actions to his father, triggering the expected reaction. Rooney is furious with his son but also relieved that the young boy won't reveal what he witnessed. Unable to differentiate between the Sullivan brothers, Connor falsely claims to have killed Michael when, in reality, he targeted Peter. Rooney punishes Connor and expresses regret for his existence, yet he also embraces his son and seeks divine intervention. The remaining Sullivans pack their belongings and abandon their home. Sullivan SR heads to the mob's headquarters, uncertain of what awaits him. Receiving a briefcase containing $25,000 from his colleague Mr. Kelly, Sullivan is instructed to take Peter and relocate to Ireland, where Kelly has connections. Unaware that Connor has mistaken the identity of the two boys, Sullivan informs Kelly that he cannot take Peter as he was the one killed. Although Kelly doesn't disclose this critical information, he reveals that Connor is in hiding. In an attempt to locate Connor, Sullivan points his gun at Kelly, demanding information on Connor's whereabouts. 
Kelly, acting as a messenger for Rooney, refuses to divulge details. Frustrated, Sullivan shoots Kelly, leaves the money, and escapes. Driving through the night with Michael, they head to Chicago, where Sullivan has additional contacts. He aims to reach them before Rooney or Connor to assess their stance on the ongoing situation. While meeting with Frank Nitti, the Chicago mob boss, Michael Jr. finally confronts his grief, shedding tears in a crowded room. Meanwhile, Sullivan SR proposes his assistance to Nitti in exchange for overlooking Connor's demise. However, Nitti declines, choosing to maintain his alliance with Rooney. Surprisingly, Rooney was in the adjoining room with Connor, eavesdropping on the conversation. When Nitti inquires about his preference, Rooney reluctantly states that Sullivan SR should be eliminated. However, he adamantly refuses to allow Michael Jr. to face the same fate. Despite Nitti urging him to eliminate the child, emphasizing that he will grow up to remember the events, Rooney stands firm in refusing harm to Michael Jr. Nitti contacts Harlan Maguire, a seasoned killer and crime scene photographer, putting a hit on Sullivan but secretly instructing him to target Michael Jr. as well. To ensure his son's safety, Sullivan arranges for Michael to stay with his Aunt Sarah. On their way to her house, they pause at a church, where the elder Sullivan spends time in prayer, likely seeking salvation for his wife and son and forgiveness for the impending actions he knows he must take. The duo makes a pit stop at a diner, and Maguire catches up with them. While Michael Jr. opts to stay in the car and read instead of having a meal, his father dines. Maguire engages Sullivan in what appears to be a normal and calm conversation, but Sullivan remains wary of him. Taking advantage of the situation, Sullivan sneaks out through the bathroom window, slashes Maguire's tires, and swiftly departs. Maguire fires shots at their car, shattering the windshield but missing both Sullivans. Sullivan SR deliberately steers the car off the road and into a field. There, he lectures Michael, emphasizing the importance of listening to him, especially in matters concerning the mob, as it's a matter of life and death. Michael expresses his unwillingness to be stuck with his father, acknowledging the blame placed on him for the unfolding events. Recognizing that the recent events have taken a toll on his son, Sullivan SR reassures him that Connor's resentment had been brewing for years, and the breaking point was inevitable. Currently, Sullivan has a strategy, but executing it alone is impossible. To force the mob to reveal Connor's whereabouts, Sullivan plans to target their financial core by robbing the banks where they stash their money. However, he can't pull it off solo, he requires a getaway driver. Consequently, he teaches his 12-year-old son to drive. After overcoming initial struggles with the clutch, Michael masters it, and they prepare for their mission by disguising their car and installing a safe in the backseat. Sullivan selectively takes money belonging to Capone and the mob, boldly leaving his name with the bank managers. His intention is not to conceal his identity but to make it clear who is challenging them. Despite the mob catching on and withdrawing their funds from other banks, Sullivan remains undeterred. He pays a visit to Rooney's accountant, Alexander Rance. Rance successfully delays Sullivan, giving Maguire, who was lodged in a nearby hotel, enough time to enter with a shotgun. Despite multiple shots fired by Maguire missing Sullivan, one proves fatal for Rance. Seizing an opportunity, Sullivan shoots Maguire in the head and locates Rooney's ledgers while Maguire grapples with pain. Slipping out through a window, Sullivan hops into a moving car but not quickly enough to avoid getting shot in the arm by Maguire. Michael Jr. takes over driving, transporting them out of town and stopping at a farmhouse after his father loses consciousness due to blood loss. Assisted by the elderly couple residing there, they extract the bullet and cauterize the wound to staunch the bleeding. In return for nursing Sullivan back to health, Michael contributes to the farm tasks, particularly those challenging for the elderly man. It's during this time that the two Sullivans form a connection, and Michael realizes that his father does care for him, albeit in a different way than most dads. Examining the stolen ledgers, Sullivan SR confirms the truth in McGovern's statement about Connor. Connor has been siphoning funds from his father and the mob for an extended period. To cover his tracks, he employs the names of deceased individuals to deposit money for personal gain. Sullivan believes that revealing this truth to Rooney could halt the hit on him, prompting a swift departure from the farm. Before leaving, they express gratitude to the generous couple by leaving a substantial portion of the stolen money. With this debt settled, the Sullivans journey back to Chicago. Aware that Rooney will be in Mass on Sunday, Sullivan confronts him in church, disclosing what he has discovered about Connor. However, Rooney is already aware and has been shielding his son for years, anticipating that someone may seek vengeance once he's gone. While he may not be able to safeguard Connor in the future, he can do so now. Rooney instructs Sullivan to leave and encourages him to raise Michael to be a better man than either of them. On a rainy night, Sullivan SR readies both his gun and himself for a final mission. Instructing Michael to return to bed, 
Sullivan assures him that everything will conclude soon. Anticipating he might never see his son again, he leaves a note for Michael. Amidst the rain and darkness, Sullivan stages an ambush on Rooney and his bodyguards. After eliminating Rooney's men, he steadily approaches Rooney, who, with a determined expression, accepts his impending fate, grateful that Sullivan is the one ending it. With a heavy heart, Sullivan takes the life of the man who raised him. Through the rain, he retraces his steps down the street. With Rooney gone, Nitty no longer feels compelled to shield Connor, harboring no fondness for him. Nitty discloses Connor's location, under the condition that the violence concludes with Connor. Sullivan locates the man responsible for his family's death in a bathtub and dispatches him with a gunshot to the head. Michael waits in their hotel room, packed and prepared for their departure, as he anticipates his father's return. Upon entering the room, Sullivan SR and Michael share a profoundly affectionate embrace, a moment neither expected. With all the individuals who had placed bounties on Sullivan's head now deceased, he believes it's finally safe to bring Michael to his Aunt Sarah in the lakeside town of Perdition on Lake Michigan. The arrival at what should be a joyous occasion takes a tragic turn as Sullivan SR is shot and killed by Maguire, who had been lying in wait. Meanwhile, Michael Jr. plays with a dog on the beach. Maguire captures photographs of the dying man but is caught off guard when Michael Jr., armed with a gun, appears behind him. Despite the threat to his own safety, Michael cannot bring himself to pull the trigger. In a final act, Michael SR shoots and kills Maguire, saving his son. Dying in his son's arms, Michael SR finds solace in his last moments, knowing he didn't raise a killer. Ultimately, he fulfilled Rooney's desire, teaching his son to be a better man. Alone, Michael succumbs to his emotions, grieving the recent loss of his father, with whom he had just started to connect. Gazing once more at the water's edge, Michael reflects that he hasn't handled a firearm since his father's passing. Sullivan SR harbored a profound fear that Michael would tread the same path and took every precaution to avert such a destiny. Taking the car and the dog, Michael returns to the place where he last felt secure, the farm with the elderly couple. While many believe it's merely where he grew up, there's more to it, it was a sanctuary after a life that existed before the farm. Throughout his existence, people frequently question Michael Sullivan Jr. about whether his father was good or bad. Consistently, his response remained unchanged, Michael Sullivan SR was his father. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.